Well, we welcome you today to Praying Through the Psalms, and we're going to look at the longest psalm, and in fact, the longest chapter in the Bible, and that is Psalm 119. And uh, I forgot how many verses it had. Let me find it real quick. But it's the longest chapter in the Bible. And also, incidentally, uh, if all you had were the books of the Bible without any study helps or anything like that, it would fall exactly in the middle of the English Bible also. It's kind of the heart uh, of the English Bible. Well, it's 176 verses. And obviously, we won't study all 176 of those verses today. Today, we're going to talk about verses 1 through 16. Uh, the first paragraph is kind of a general heading, and then we're going to look at the theme of living clean. Now, just to note, and we won't get into any detail on this, but Psalm 119 is a fascinating piece of literature because every section begins uh, with the, the letter of the, the Hebrew alphabet in order of those letters. And so it was really a creative piece of literature, but we know it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. But the thing that I think of when we think of Psalm 119 is a young boy I met in India several years ago. I happened to be at Atarsi, India uh, when the first uh, group of orphans arrived at the newly opened orphanage, or boys' home is what they called it. Uh, they had all been, uh, word had gone out to all the pastors throughout India that uh, this uh, orphanage was opening, this boys' home was opening. And uh, those pastors in the area that knew of children that needed uh, housing and love and care, uh, they were to get the children to a certain place at a railroad junction, and then they'd all come down to Tarsi as a group. So I happened to be there at the time when that first group came in. And uh, they all wore very old, raggedy clothes. Uh, but the look on their faces, they were so scared. Uh, that none of them knew English. Uh, a new, new environment, uh, some of them had lost their parents, some of them had just been given up because the family was too poor to be able to feed them. So these are young boys in real traumatic situation. And as it oftentimes does in Atarsi, the power went out, so they were alone in the dark for a while. But I'll never forget seeing that group of maybe a dozen, 15 boys uh, so scared away from home. It was really a sad thing. but. Uh, they were going to give them hope. They were going to tell them about Jesus and take care of them and love them and raise them through high school and help them get a job and all of that. Well, I came back a couple years later and they had some of them up on a stage at one of the pastor's meetings we were having and there's a large group of people there. People from the village came and many pastors and whatnot. And there were three young boys who stood up and word for word, out of memory, recited Psalm 119. All three of these boys, and many of us follow along with the King James Bible, and they didn't miss a word. I mean, and they, and just a few years before that, when they arrived at the orphanage, they didn't even know English. And now they're reciting all of Psalm 119, all 176 verses, word for word, without missing a word. And then the next time I came back to India, this uh, similar group, one boy and a couple others, uh, they repeated the whole book of James word for word. Uh, without missing anything that, that we saw, that we could hear. And it was incredible. Well, I'm telling you that, not only because it goes along with something that the, the passage here teaches us, but one of those young boys uh, was able to go back to their home village over a break, in the school break. He was only 11 years old. He had a couple of relatives still alive in the village. He wanted to go see them. So Pastor Thomas made arrangements for him to get back and see his relatives. When the people in the village found out that he was a Christian, they threatened him and they, they told him he must renounce Christ and return to the, the gods of his village and the religion of his family. And as an 11 year old boy, he stood strong for Christ. He refused to denounce Christ and the villagers killed him. He was an 11 year old martyr. Oh, how, you know, it moves our hearts, but to think of an 11 year old so strong in his faith that going back to his home village at only 11 years old, being threatened with death, he still did not denounce Jesus Christ. He had met Jesus at the orphanage and, and uh, through other experiences and was, was grounded in the Word. What gave him the strength to be like that? What gave him the fortitude to be like that? I know the grace of God was heavy upon him, but I also know that it was because he hid the Word of God in his heart. His interaction with the Word of God is what a major factor in giving him that strength. And I trust that you and I will 
Learn to get the Word of God into our hearts and minds so that it can give us that same kind of strength. Well, I know that was kind of a long introduction, but I want you to remember that, that young boy and how strong he was in Jesus, very much in part because of the Word of God in his heart and his life. Uh, Lorraine's going to read for us verses 1 through 16 of Psalm 119 under the theme of how to live clean. Hey, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do, not in, do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into all your commandments, I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as, as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Well, what a powerful statement at the end. I will not forget your word. Well, how can we live clean? Boy, we are in a, in a society and a culture here in America now. Yeah, we're just bombarded with impurities all around us, temptations all around us. And sometimes you look at this young generation and you say, how can they live clean in such a corrupt environment with so many alluring influences? Well, how can anybody live clean? Well, it says, look at verse 9, how can a young man keep his way clean by taking heed to God's word? And the Word of God is powerful, isn't it? And, and the, 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 the effect of God's Word is powerful. Before we go any farther, notice the importance in verse 2 and in verse 10 of seeking God with your whole heart. Not just partially or occasionally, but with your whole heart. If you and I are going to live clean, it has to be a day by day, even hour by hour, moment by moment throughout the day, taking heed to God's Word and, and living clean but doing it with a whole heart. Uh, two kings in the Old Testament, they were good kings, but they didn't pursue God with all their heart. Jehu was one of the best kings. He was a very good king. But in 2 Kings 10, 31 and 32, it says, He did not take heed to walk in the law of the Lord his God of Israel with all his heart. And in those days, God began to cut Israel short. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a connection between not serving with your whole heart and then being cut short? Yes. So he was a great man. He was a great man, but not with his whole heart. Amaziah was a good king. It says about Amaziah, 2 Chronicles 25, 2, he did that which was right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. So, you know, we need to strive to serve God with all of our hearts, not just 60%, 70%, better than most others. No, with all of our hearts. And so that's important. Verse 2 and verse 10 with a whole heart. He says, with my whole heart, I seek you. Well, now let's get into this whole idea of taking heed to the Word of God. In verse 9, he listens to the Word with the intent of obeying. He says, how can a young man keep his ways by guarding it according to your word? With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. He wants to obey the word of the Lord. In verse 33 later on it says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I'll keep it to the end. So there's a willingness not only to know the word, but to obey the word. But hiding the word in our heart, the word has a cleansing effect. And, and Lorraine, you have some scriptures to share about the ministry of the word cleansing us. I have some great scriptures. John 15, 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Ephesians 5, 26, That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And James 1, 21, 
Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Well, think of that engrafted word. If you were to take a tree and graft, you know, you, you cut off something and then you stick in a, a, another a limb that you cut off somewhere else and you graft it together, it actually grows as a, as a part of the same. What was that attitude? What do you think the attitude we have to have if we're going to receive that engrafted word according to that scripture? Uh, that you just read for us. So James says, receive yeah. the engraft word, but it takes a certain mentality to receive the word. Yeah, you got to be in the word, desire the word, um, just be quick to repent, quick yep. to turn to God, quick to pray. Yep. No matter what is going on, quick to pray. It takes you don't a, understand, quick to pray. You don't a, like it, quick to pray. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and don't, don't just labor over it, bring it to the Lord. But yeah. it takes a humility, doesn't it? In, in meekness, yeah. we receive the. Yeah the engrafted word, but notice the word itself has a cleansing effect. Mm -hmm. Jesus said you're clean through the word. So what do we do with the word? Let's look at the word in our heart. Verse 11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that word to store up or hide, some translations say I've hidden your word in my heart. Uh, Safan, it means to store up or to lay up. And I think there's two ways we can store up and lay up the Word of God in our heart. One is to be memorizing the Word. To be in the Word and going over the Word so that we remember the Word. Notice how this passage ends. I will not forget your Word. Mm -hmm. And so spend time disciplining your mind in the Word of God so that we will not forget the Word of God. And of course, reading it and then seeking to apply it helps you remember it. Uh, but like that boys, those boys in India, they must have spent hours memorizing this. And uh, a lot of times it's, it's like hard mental work to memorize something. So that's one way. Uh, in verse 16, I delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And in verse 15 also, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Meditate. What, 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 what do you think it means to meditate? How do we meditate on the Word to of God? To stay on, to focus, to don't veg out. Yeah, don't, don't, did you say veg out? <laughs> we think about food again, now we're all hungry. But to focus on the Word of God. Notice it says, I fix my eyes on your ways, and that can have a broader application. But shouldn't it also be that we take time fixing our eyes? Not just on my notes, but on the Word of God and, and chewing on it and going over and over. Will you take time today to take a passage of Scripture, maybe from your devotional reading, and just meditate on it for a few minutes? Lord, what are you saying to me through this? What does this mean? How does this fit in? And then just rehearsing it over and over in your, in your mind. Also in verses 14 and 16, it talks about delighting in God's Word. Really being excited about delighting in His Word. And uh, this whole idea of meditating and delighting, that makes meditation easier if you delight in it. Uh, Lauren, you had picked out Psalm 1 about meditation, and there's some real promises about meditating upon the Word of God. It hides it in our hearts to help keep us clean. I will stop at verse 2. Okay. Even though there's so much good in here, you can read it later. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Wow, so notice he, he can meditate because he delights in it. Right, but then it says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I, I know, I saw that. I you said you were going to quit at verse 2. Well, if you're meditating, <laughs> you will feel like a, a tree that's very well watered. Yeah, and how do I make sure my tree is always watered? By meditating on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's like Gordon Fee would, would teach, or probably still does teach. There's two ways to read the Bible, slow and fast. Read through it fast just to get a general feel for a book and general knowledge of it, but also read it slow. Slow down and meditate on the Word. That's a part of hiding the Word in your heart. Oftentimes, if you meditate on, this, on a passage, you're memorizing it without even trying. And the, the main thing is not to get each word order correct, but you're getting the truth of the Word in your heart and in your mind, and you delight in the Word. Psalm 112, 1 says, 
Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and greatly delights in his commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus is God, always was, always will be God. Never was a moment when he wasn't God. But there was a period of time where he laid that aside in terms of how he functioned. And he faced the devil in temptation. About the laying aside, you can re read Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And in temptation. And the Spirit of God had come upon him at his baptism. And I know the angels of God were there to help him. But there's also a powerful tool he used when he, when he faced temptation. And it's found in this phrase, as it is written. The devil even tried to twist some scripture, but Jesus could always come back to scripture and say, as it is written, as it is written. And if Jesus needed to be immersed in the word, how much more should we be immersed in the word? And here's the last thought, and then we'll, we'll hear that song again and we'll worship with that song about the, the, the word is a lamp and a light to us, a guide to us. But look at verse 12, and then I'm gonna ask Elaine to pray for us on this point. But verse 12 says, Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Teach me your statutes. There must be an openness, it goes along with humility, for, for, for being taught. You must be teachable. And when you come to church or listen to these videos, you have an open heart to be teachable, mm -hmm. to receive the word as it's being ministered to you through others, to have a teachable spirit but also to ask the Holy Spirit who wrote this word to illuminate it to your mind and open your mind that the Spirit might teach you the word as well. And, and Lorraine, I know you've used a lot the preacher's uh, outline Bible, I do too. And you had found some scriptures there uh, about the, being taught the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit uh, teaching us the word of God. And so be open to that too. Pray, Lord, open my mind and heart that your spirit might teach me the word as I meditate upon it and store it up in my heart. What are those passages? Yeah, John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And John 16, 13, how about when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He shall show you things to come. And 1 uh, Corinthians 2, 10 through 14, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that which we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the, which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And Psalm 25, 4, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. And then, of course, Psalm 119, 33, Teach me, O Lord, the ways of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Yes, yeah, so there's a desire to learn, not just to have knowledge, but to obey and to keep it. You know, one of the best ways to, to, mem to remember the Word is to read it, to meditate upon it, and then apply it. And as you're applying it, it becomes even more real to you. Now, how can a young man cleanse his way? How can a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed to God's Word by storing it up, treasuring it up, hiding it in your heart through reading, through meditation, through prayer to the Holy Spirit to illuminate it. Think of it, the, the scripture was written, it's a supernatural book, written by the breath of God, and that same breath or Spirit of God can help you to understand it. So before we close with that song of worship again, I'm gonna ask Elaine to pray for you, that you would be open to the Holy Spirit's ministry teaching you the word, that the Word of God would become even more alive and real in you as you hide it in your heart so that you can live clean and live strong for Jesus. Would you lead us in prayer? 
Uh, interesting thought. You know, it says faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. Take the word of God and sit somewhere and read it out loud and hear it. It helps you to focus, helps you stay focused, and you're also hearing the word. And you're triggering faith in you so you can live out what it says. So, Lord, I pray for Thank my you, sisters, my brothers out there, God, that you will touch them. them. Father God, that you will have them, your word will be illuminated to them, Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. as they do their due diligence to get into the word, to seek your word, to meditate on your word, to speak it out loud, to listen, to write it. Lord, I just pray, God, as they do these things, you will give them what they need to live righteously. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's